So this is the MSI Alpha 15, and this kind of caught my interest because this is the second laptop to use the RX 5500M GP. We've only seen this thing in the MacBook Pro 16, and when I went to test it out using Windows Boot Camp, the drivers were just not optimized. Like, performance was adequate, but it just wasn't nearly as good as it could be. This, on the other hand, has had all the drivers optimized and the performance is significantly better than what you'd get with a MacBook Pro 16 using Windows. Now this is expected. Apple doesn't care to take the time to really optimize these drivers. It's a secondary operating system on their main device. But I wanted to see the true potential of this GPU and it is pretty impressive. It's not as powerful as a GTX 1660 Ti, that you'd find in something like the Helios 300, but it's much more powerful than the GTX 1650. So this is $900, and I would consider this a premium budget or low-end mid-range gaming laptop. It has a very clean look. It's all black. You have the MSI Alpha logo in the middle. You have these edges sticking upwards. Top is metal, but the rest of the laptop is made out of plastic. It's not one of the lighter gaming laptops that you can buy, but it's around five pounds. So still light enough that you can travel with it, but there's obviously lighter out there. Port selection is really good. Like you have tons of IO. You have your audio jacks, USB 3.2, mini display port, HDMI, RJ45. And then on the other side, you have your power connector, which is 180 watts, SD card, two more USB, 3.2 slots. The only thing I want to mention is that that power connector is on the right hand side. So if this thing is sticking out and you're right handed, it might get in the way. For me, it doesn't matter because I'm a lefty, so it doesn't bother me, but something you might want to consider when buying this laptop. Now, just like most gaming laptops, you have the RAM, which is upgradable. This one happens to have eight gigabytes and it's in a dual channel configuration, which is very important for AMD CPUs. You have your M2 NVMe drive, and you also have an extra slot to place a 2.5 inch drive. So if you wanna place a mechanical hard drive or an SSD, you have that option. One thing I do wanna say though, is that the battery life is not the greatest. Like this is, I think a 50 watt hour battery and I only got a total of four hours of use doing productivity before needing to charge. One thing I do have to give credit to MSI for is this cooling solution. Like this laptop runs very well. I think it's the fact that they have enough heat pipes running across the middle, plus the seven nanometer architecture from AMD. This is hands down one of the quietest and most well-cooled gaming laptops that I've reviewed in the last little while. The only way I could get the fans to go over 50 decibels was when I was cranking the CPU and GPU using synthetic benchmarks. Most Intel processors will crank the fans up to 60 decibels in some laptops if it gets a little hot. This did such a good job staying cool. Even the keyboard temperatures were about 40 degrees Celsius. So the one area that's not the greatest is the display, like the color gamut, the color accuracy, and even the brightness is fairly low. It's okay for gaming, but it's not acceptable for content creation. So if you're buying this to do design work plus game, you're gonna wanna use an external, more color accurate monitor. Now this is a 120 Hertz refresh display using AMD's Radeon FreeSync. So you're gonna have smooth gameplay if you can get the frames per second to match it. The other thing that really sucks on this laptop is the webcam. I mean, you know, it's 720p. It's coloring is actually not bad, but of course, there is a ton of noise. Also, the speakers on this are terrible. They're on the bottom, right over here, and the sound quality is super tinny. Like, you definitely wanna hook up a headset to this device. The keyboard is in partnership with SteelSeries, like we've seen this on other MSI gaming laptops. The design of it hasn't changed in many years, but I do prefer it over the keyboard on the Nitro 5. Full size, so you have that numeric keypad, and of course you have per key RGB. Touchpad, it's not the greatest. I mean, it is using Windows Precision, it is made out of plastic, but I'm not a fan of these click buttons. There's also a tiny bit of keyboard flex, which I think they can improve in a future model. So this is a very interesting product because it was such a nice breath of fresh air to be able to game on a gaming laptop that didn't have fans that were going absolutely nuts. Yes, you can hear them, but they're not nearly as loud under load compared to, let's say, the Helios 300, which gets up to like 
60 decibels. It was also nice being able to game on a laptop where the CPU temperatures stayed cool. 70 degrees was the max temperature that this thing got. And that was really nice to see. And even the CPU speeds were sitting around 2.8 to 2.9 gigahertz. Yes, the Intel equivalent will beat this out in terms of sheer performance. But I think we got to give AMD some credit for creating a CPU and GPU that runs quieter and most importantly, cooler. I think for 900 bucks, if you can't afford 100 to $150 more, the Alpha 15 is not a bad gaming laptop. It's just, it could use a few improvements in future models like slightly better build quality, better speakers, and of course, a better display. Anyways, that wraps this up. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram because CES starts this week and you get to see behind the scenes and I'll see you guys in the next video.